There's no doubt you're seeing the words Title 42 a lot this week. Along with them, the images of hundreds of thousands of people lined up to cross the U.S. border. Our state and federal governments expect a massive surge in migration after Title 42 expires at midnight tonight. Joining me live to talk about the impact here in Texas is KPRC2 investigator Robert Arnold. Robert, you have reported on Title 42 extensively. I want to start by making sure our folks this morning listening and watching understand what Title 42 is. This was something that came about in the 1940s. It was created by our government as a way to help stop the spread of a communicable disease. Essentially, it's it's a health care measure. It's not an immigration measure. And what it says is that it gives the federal government the authority to stop somebody traveling from a foreign country at our border and say, we're going to stop you here and we're going to send you back to the country you just came from because we have a concern about your presence coming in further spreading a communicable disease. And like I said, that's been used in targeted ways it's rarely used. It was, it came about during the pandemic under President Donald Trump, and it became increasingly used on our border as a way to quickly expel migrants without going through the cumbersome process of deportation. So when you have, in matter of fact, just the first six months of this fiscal year, 419,000 immigrants have been expelled from the country under Title 42 because what it's, it's not an immigration uh, charge. It just says, we're gonna send you back for health related reasons. They're not charged with any crime. There's no culpability on that end, nothing when Title 42 is used. So when Title 42 goes away, now everybody's subject to Title 8, which is deportation or expedited removal. And if they come back in again after that, they can face very serious charges at this point. That, that's very interesting. I did not know the backstory. I did not realize that Title 42 had been around for so long, and it, in mm -hmm. fact, was not used or initially made, uh, uh, brought about as the uh, as the immigration uh, type procedure. Uh, no, wait, no, it was not. It was not designed for immigration control at all. It was simply yeah. designed to, to to protect the public's health in the United States. Yeah, that, that's that's very fascinating. Not something that we uh, talk a lot about when we are when we're talking about Title 42. When, so when Title 42 expires, you mentioned Title 8 will will go back into play. What is you, you touched upon it? But what is Title 8, and what changes will we see? I know you touched upon a, a few of those, but give us more on that. Well, Title VIII never went away. Title VIII was still being used along the border. Title 42 was just used as a, as a means of quickly expelling migrants. Title VIII is the deportation process, and that can be cumbersome. And the reason that can be cumbersome and a lot of the, the problems that we've seen along the border is a person has to be deported to their home country. So say you have somebody from a country other than Mexico, you can't just simply kick that person back across the border, deport them back to Mexico. You have to deport them to your home country. Well, to do that, you have to have a place to, to house and actually care for that individual until arrangements can be made to send them back to their home country. Well, when you see the overwhelming, the historic numbers that we've been seeing along our border, we don't have the detention space to house all these other people who are coming from countries other than Mexico until their cases can be heard. So many have to be released into the United States with what are called NTAs, notices to appear at immigration court at a later date and they can claim asylum or they can try to remain in this country through that process. But at the border, the numbers that we are seeing, unless Title 42 had been used, then we would have to detain the individual until, like I said, their, their case works their way through the process. And so that's why you've seen this push-pull about keeping Title 42 in place. But really that's all kind of moot at this point because Title 42 really is only possible in times of a public health emergency and that's all expiring now as the COVID-19 emergencies are, are expiring. Robert, when you talk about this push-pull, uh, there appears to be a major divide between Democrats and Republicans on this issue. That's nothing new. Do you think that this divide will be detrimental in how we move forward, especially after uh, midnight tomorrow? and the impact that it'll have here in Texas? I, I don't really think it's my, my place to decide if it's detrimental or not. What I can say is that right now, from every immigration attorney that I've spoken to, to every person that has been mm -hmm. helping immigrants, you know, uh, in this country with either shelter or supplies or food, that the system is chaotic right now. There's no yeah. clear cut 
priorities. And when you have this type of influx, it's only going to add to the backlog that we're already seeing in immigration court. I mean, we have 2.1 million cases already backlogged in immigration court across the country. It takes one case, one case, an average of 728 days to make it through, make its way through the immigration court system. And the numbers that we're seeing, it's likely that's going to get worse. Yeah. Great perspective for us this morning. We appreciate your time, Robert. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir.